Hello and welcome back to Honors Topics in Physics. Uh, now we're going to start to get into some more uh, what I would consider physics-y types of things. Uh, the previous unit was kind of some, some precursor stuff to this, but we're going to be getting into motion um, and how you would describe it and how you can even tell if something is in motion. How can you tell if something is in motion? You might say, well, it's moving. Well, how can you tell if something is moving? Well, it's changing where it's at. It's changing position. How can you tell if something is changing position or not? Okay, for example, um, I'm sitting behind my computer desk right now making this this uh, video for you all. Um, do you think my desk is in motion? I'm, I'm just sitting in my house. I'm not on the back of a tractor trailer or anything, just in case you were wondering. Um, well, the, the question is, or the answer is yes, my desk is moving. Uh, why? Because the whole surface of the earth is moving at about a thousand miles an hour. And not only that, so are the animation's not going to work. Here we go. Not only is my desk rotating around the surface of the Earth as the Earth spins, uh, the Earth itself is, is uh, revolving around the sun. So the Earth is rotating and revolving. So now we're going faster than 1,000 miles per hour. Okay? Not only that, but our whole solar system is in the arm of a spiral galaxy called the Milky Way. And uh, we're a speck of dust uh, in one of these arms. And uh, that whole that whole thing is is spiraling, is spinning, uh, as well. And not only that, our galaxy, our entire galaxy, is moving throughout the the universe. Uh, it is is moving with with a, within a group of, of galaxies. So uh, the the key thing there is is was my desk moving? Well, not relative to the ground, not compared to the ground, but relative to the sun or relative to another galaxy. Yes, for sure. Um, we always judge relative rel uh, judge motion relative to something else. That's that's kind of the main point. If you say that you're driving 55 miles per hour, what we really mean is you're driving 55 miles per hour relative to the ground, not to the sun. Okay. Uh, very very often we use the surface of the Earth as our as our relative uh, point. If we say the car is moving ahead of me at 10 miles per hour, we're both on the highway. And the car is moving ahead of me. Well, we're judging its motion compared to me. If we say that the Earth is moving in a circle, what we really mean is, well, compared to the sun. Uh, and if we say the universe is expanding, we mean relative to itself, I guess. Um, so um, so we're, when we describe motion, we're, we're, we'll just keep in the back of your mind that we always describe motion relative to something else. But when we describe motion, what we want to say is uh, we need to talk about how fast something is moving. So the, the lower wagon is moving faster than the upper wagon. Uh, that's one thing that we can describe motion. Uh, the direction of motion is it, which way is it going is another thing we need to, to describe when we talk about the motion of an object. Uh, whether it's moving at a constant speed or perhaps is it slowing down or speeding up? Is it speeding up, slowing down or moving at a constant speed? These are things. So these are all things that we, we need to talk about. And whether is it moving in a straight line or is it turning? Uh, it's another another consideration, straight line path or turning. So initially, we're going to look at the simplest uh, form of motion, and that's just moving in a straight line at a constant speed. So that's where we're going to start out. Um, so when we start talking about speed, speed is a rate. and and uh, But what is a rate? If we were going to talk about a guy's rate of eating a hot dog, what, 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 how would you describe his rate of eating hot dogs? Let's say he's really fast at eating hot dogs. What would a possible rate be? Um, maybe four hot dogs per minute, maybe five hot dogs per minute. I think they, I think they can achieve these rates of five hot dogs per minute. I know it's gross, but uh, they dunk them in water and, and the whole thing bun it all in water and swallow it down. Uh, a normal rate of hot dog eating, uh, eating might be closer to a, a hot dog per day, but a rate is basically how quickly something happens. So it's it's something divided by time. Uh, the smaller the amount of time, the bigger the rate. So if we were to describe the rate at which a person is moving, what what's changing uh, with time? What's changing per time? We talked about it when we talked about it initially uh, at the beginning of the slideshow. Uh, if a person's position is changing. So uh, if a person's position is changing, then they, they travel a distance. And uh, speed is distance over time, or S equals D over T. So speed is the rate at which an object's position changes, or the rate at which it, it travels distance. 
So which of the following could represent speed? Distance over time, meter per second. Would that be speed? I think so. Kilometers per hour. Yep. Distance over time. Yep. That, that could be it. Miles per hour. Yep. Meters per kilogram. No, because we're dividing by mass instead of time. So this would not be a unit of speed. Not that one. So let's say we wanted to figure out a person's speed and they traveled uh, six meters and it took them three seconds to do it. Well, the distance traveled was six meters and the time is three seconds. So six divided by three is two meters per second. So that would be their speed, in this case, their average speed. So if they travel a constant two meters per second, what that means is in the first second, they went two meters. In the next second, they went another two meters. And in the third second, they went another two meters. They travel two meters per second. Each second, they go two meters. That's what that's what that rate means. Um, how far will you traveled if you traveled for 10 seconds, if you traveled two meters per second? Would it be five or 20? Think fast. It'd be 20. You would travel uh, 20 meters in because each second he goes two meters. Uh, let's say we had two people. Uh, they both travel for two seconds. Uh, one goes two meters. The other one goes uh, goes six meters. Who had the greater speed? The person on bottom. They went a greater distance in the same amount of time. One meter per second. And this person went three meters per second. Let's say they both travel uh, four meters, but we have one person who does it in a shorter amount of time. And do they travel faster or slower? The person up top, they traveled faster. They got to the same distance, but they did it more quickly. Uh, so if your speedometer reads 55 MPH, what does MPH stand for? Miles per hour or miles over hours, miles divided by hours. Um, what does that mean? That means that you go 55 miles each hour. So every hour that travels, you travel, or that passes, you travel at 55 miles. So uh, now I want to just take a brief moment and and talk about the the, the word change and how it how it's used in in uh, in science. Um, when we talk about the change of something, we use a, a symbol for it called a delta. So this is the the Mississippi River Delta, I believe. I believe this is a picture a picture of that. And notice that it's got this triangular shape. And the delta is the change from fresh water to, to salt water, and it happens to deposit a lot of dirt in the process when, it, when they meet. So delta, this, tri this triangle symbol, uh, is used to symbolize change. So the, no, I would know that. Delta means change or change in. So if I want to know delta T, I want to know the change in time. It's the final T2 minus the initial T1. So the subscript here means that it's that it's the second uh, time, and this one means it was the first time. So we've got final <coughs> minus initial. So what was delta T in my example up here? Well, the 60 seconds is my final time minus 15 seconds. So I subtract them, and I get 45 seconds is my delta T. Average speed is equal to the change in position over the change in time. So change in position would be final position minus initial position uh, divided by final time minus initial time. So delta P over delta T. Uh, and the change in position is really the, the distance that, we're, that we've been talking about. And the change in time is really just the time, the time elapsed, <coughs> the time that went by. Uh, in um, when, when you talked about slopes, um, you might have seen it in this form. Okay. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, which we could have rewritten as delta Y over delta X. So you see this more than just where I'm talking about it now. Um, the idea of, of change is, is pretty, pretty uh, common. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, okay. So let's use our equation speed equals distance over time a little bit. Here we've got a slug and it's poke and it moves for 25 seconds at 4.6 millimeters per second. How long is its slime trail? Okay. So our equation is S equals D over T, D over T. 
So the 25 seconds is our time. Okay. This 4.6 millimeters per second, that is our what? Think about it. That's our speed. Okay, and we're looking for how long the slime trail is. We're looking for the distance. So we're going to plug into our equation speed 4.6 equals distance over over time, which was 20, I forget exactly what it was, 25 seconds. So, um, so 4.6 equals uh, distance D over T, which is 25 seconds. Uh, now to solve this mathematically, what we would do is multiply by both sides by 25 and we would get, we would get 115 and our answers would have units of millimeters. If we watch, watch what we multiply millimeters per second times seconds, we're going to end up with millimeters. Okay. Uh, a student runs, runs down the hall at four, uh, 1.4 meters per second to the classroom, which is 38 meters away. How long does it take them to get to class? Okay, so one, whoops. So let me, so 1.4 meters per second, that is our, mm, that is our speed. So I'm not sure if it recorded me doing this one, but so it was 1.4 equals uh, 38 over T. And what I suggested that you do is you uh, put the 1.4 over one and cross multiply. When you're looking for a variable that's on bottom, you put the uh, cross multiply. And what you're gonna get is 1.4 T equals 38. And if you solve this correctly, and you should probably take a moment to do so, you, you should get 27, uh, 27 seconds would be your answer rounded to two sig figs. Okay. <coughs> Next and last problem here for a little while, I believe. Driving along at the Autobahn on the Autobahn for 185 kilometers per hour or at 185 kilometers per hour, how far do you travel in 23 seconds? So um, 185 kilometers per hour, that's our speed. How far do you travel in 23 seconds? That's our time. The equation is speed equals distance over time. So 185 equals distance over time. Now, because what I'm looking for is on top here, the D is on top, all I have to do is multiply both sides by 23. And uh, we're going to get, uh, oh, I, I made a mistake here, didn't I? I need to, I, I, w I wasn't watching units. Um, we should convert this, the seconds into, into hours. Ah, uh, let's, let's do that real quick. So 23 seconds using factor label, 23 divided by 60 divided by 60. So that's equal to 0 0.006, woo, 0.006. Point oh oh six four hours. Um, so I need to erase. Over time. So um, my speed is 185. And my distance is what I'm looking for. And my time is point oh oh six four now i multiply both sides by 0 .064, 185, and i get the distance equals 1.12 keeping two sig figs we should really round this to 1.1 1 .1, 1 .1, uh, kilometers okay so that one had a little bit of a trick in it uh, i forgot about my, my own trick i almost tricked myself but you got to be careful. You got to watch watch units and things. So uh, let's say that we go on a road trip. We we go a 400 kilometers divided by eight hours. Uh, 400 divided by by eight is 50 uh, 50 hours kilometers per hour. Um, that's my average speed. That's what we've been calculating is the average speed. Why would that only be my average speed? 
Okay. Well, I'm probably not going to go that whole speed that 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 same speed that whole time. If you go on a road trip, your speed's going to change for a lot of different reasons. Different roads have different speed limits. Um, you might run into some construction. Uh, so here you, you're starting from rest, you speed up, you hit you hit some construction, you slow down, okay, then you get out of construction, you speed up, then you run out of gas, you need some more gas, glug, 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 and then you go on about your way, and then you arrive at your destination. So the if we had calculated that, that was 400 kilometers and took us eight hours, simu simulated hours, <coughs> that would have just been our average speed because our, our overall speed changed quite a bit. Uh, so there's the average speed that we've been looking at, but there's also what's called your instantaneous speed. And that is your speed at a given moment in time, at, at a specific or instant uh, moment in time. Um, so if we look at your speedometer, okay, does that tell you your average speed, your distance divided by time, or does that tell you your instantaneous speed, your speed at a given moment? It tells you your instantaneous speed at a given moment, at a very specific moment in time. So if I asked you who had the greater average speed, so let's look at these cars. They both start at the same time. Car one keeps going. The other one slows down. But they, they arrive at the same distance at the same time. Well, they'd end, up, they'd end up having the same average speed, but the car below it would have had a faster instantaneous speed for uh, some, some of its time. Uh, at some of its time, its instantaneous speed was zero. So that's kind of the difference between instantaneous speed and average speed. Uh, if you move at a constant speed, then your average speed and your instantaneous speed will be the same. So if you drive at a constant 55 miles per hour, that would be your average speed and your instantaneous speed. And that's where we're going to wrap it up for today.